Hi, good afternoon, good morning. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about slavery and racism. Now, the Bible does not condone racism or slavery. When the Bible says slavery, it's talking about something completely different from what we believe in. Okay, the Bible does talk about slavery, but it does not say there's discrimination or racism involved in it. The Bible says a person who become, can become a slave when he or she deliberately sells himself in order to pay off a debt. Okay, so if I can't afford something, I could sell myself to that person for maybe two months or one year, and then that money is mine, even though I'm a slave to that person. And then afterwards, I pay off the debt and I'm free again. And in Israel, every seven years, a Jewish person was set free no matter what happened. Why? Because the Jews came out of slavery after 430 years in Egypt, right here in Africa, in the north. Right? Remember, Joseph was sent there first. He became a prime minister under the Pharaoh. So Joseph was wonderful because God gave him wisdom in order to make sure that the country of Egypt survived famine. And God did that. But after Joseph died, a new king arose in Egypt and he put the Hebrew children, the Hebrew people, including Moses, into slavery for 430 long years. So God does remember long times. And then Moses came and said, God has sent me to get you out of here. And God delivered Israel out of the bondage of slavery in Egypt, right? Because God likes people to be set free. Okay, that's the first thing to realize. So, when you go to the New Testament, you find there's no slavery of blacks and whites at all in the church. It doesn't exist. Why? The Roman Empire was a slave society. But in the church, that didn't exist. Because the Bible says you're all one in Christ Jesus, right here, okay? So there's no bond, no free, no Greek, no Roman, no male, no female. You're all one in Jesus Christ. So if you're black, you can actually go up the ladder in a church full of white people because God has put your seal on him, on you, so long as you're righteous before God. In fact, the early church had many African church leaders. And when you read the book of Acts, there's actually two of them mentioned by name, who are actually part of the early church. None of the other Jewish people said, oh, you're a black guy, what are you doing our church for? No. When the Lord Jesus was led to be crucified, a black man actually volunteered, actually was forced by the Romans to carry the cross of the Lord Jesus. Right? And the Lord, uh, you know, after, afterwards we find that he had a son. And that one of those sons actually became an, an early church leader as well. And they came from a country called Cyrene. Now, Cyrene is next door to Egypt, right there in the north. Now, just because it's in the north does not mean that Africans in the north have no relationship to the Africans in the south. Most people think that, which is wrong. Because they think that Africa is only a country, even today. But... Uh, See, if you look on the map to start off with, that's the United States there, in Canada, right? You could put the whole of America into the continent of Africa four times. That's how big Africa is as a continent. So, I need a lot of traveling. It can take you one week to travel between uh, the East Coast and the West Coast of the United States. All the way from New York to California, it take you a whole week to drive by car, driving about 50 miles an hour. But imagine traveling from the north of Africa all the way <laughs> It'll take a whole month, right? Uh, I've driven all the way from London to Spain, and it takes me through three days. And that's on a journey of roughly 1,200 miles, okay? And by the time you get there, you're tired and whacked out. You just want to go to sleep for a couple of hours, you know? So Africa is a huge continent, huge potential, different and diverse cultures, not just one. So the northern part is linked because all of us come from the son who was sons and daughters of Ham, who was also the father and son of the Chinese, the Aztecs, and everybody else. That's our father in the background. So Cyrene was, a, was, a, was an African country, just like Egypt was. But there was no racism in the early church whatsoever. In America, sadly, in the 19th and 18th centuries, uh, racist ideas emerged because people wanted to be superior one to the other. But that's not biblical, okay? Uh, I could actually go in, de in depth about this, but that's not my point today. Today, I just want to zero in on a real racist ideology, okay? For example, let's see. Did you know that Muhammad was actually a slave trader? The Muslims actually agree he was. Yeah. The Muslims like to talk about Bilal. 
But the Islamic books actually go and tell us that Muhammad had many, many slaves. Black slaves. And the racist words that come out of these guys are incredible. They'll look, they would make the Ku Klux Klan look like babies. Okay? So we find that Quran, it says, for example, the word Abid. If it, why do Muslims always call me a black man Abid? It's the N word in Arabic. It's a derogatory racist word against black people. That's rubbish. Yes, it is. Which word are you talking okay. about? Right. And furthermore, Which word the Quran tells us that uh, white people go to heaven, black people go to hell. Why is that? Say that again? Yeah, you heard it. Who goes to heaven? Who goes to hell? Yeah, you tell. You say I'm going. I got a black Say, skin. I got a hell. What nonsense! Well, that's in the Quran. There's no, a footnote. Show me where is it in the Quran. Show me right. where is it in the Quran. Check out uh, chapter three, verse one or six. Right? There's actually a reference there written by Yusuf Ali, an Islamic translator of the Quran, which actually sold. And it says, "Black is the color of misery. Rubbish. Black is the color of rebellion." Rubbish. Oh, okay, you Are tell you, him. I'm just rubbish. quoting him. Right, and it says if you say that Muhammad is black, you should be killed. Rubbish. Oh, yes, he does. All lies, all lies. Well, there you go. Quote, anyone quote who says that Muhammad was black should be killed, I quote. Right, that is from Muhammad, messenger of Allah, Ashifa or Qaeda, uh, Musa Yasubi, translated by Isha, Medina Press, Ibn Escott, 1991, page 375. Everything you've said right. since I've been here is false. Well, that's a reference. Rubbish. That's right. Have you read it? Rubbish. Well, you, well, you say rubbish. rubbish because it's embarrassing. Rubbish. I can understand your problem. The last sermon of the Prophet, the Prophet said there's no difference between an Arab and a black or a black and an, and an Arab. Right. There's no difference. The only thing that makes what a difference color was is Muhammad? piety. What color was It doesn't Muhammad? matter what it was. Okay. What difference does it make? Right. Here's a, here's a correct reference, right? It says, quote, Black is the color of darkness, sin, rebellion, misery, removal from the grace and light of Allah. These are the signs of heaven and hell. The standard of decision in all questions is the justice of Allah, unquote. And you find that on Abdul Yusuf Ali's Quran, footnote 432. Are you black? Don't, don't change Are the topic. Am I white? Are uh, you black? Was Muhammad white? Do you know what, what is white? What's white? Right. This is white. Uh, no, white. no, no, no. <laughs> and this is black. It's all bullshit. Right. I don't swear. They're don't children swear. here. Where's like me. Where's no, I am. There's no children I am. Here. I'm a child of God. Don't you, swear. I give you that one. The first sensible thing you've said. Why do you swear day. though? The first not sensible why. thing. Why are we swearing? I said bullshit. It's not what? That's your good, dirty heart. Yeah. Dirty mouth, dirty heart. Right. Sayyid Bukhari 1.37 says Muhammad had a white thigh. He had a white armpit. And he, and he was called, Behold, the white man. That's Muhammad. Rubbish. Well, that's your own book. That's Sayyid Bukhari. Rubbish. Well, you tell them. They wrote it. I read it. <laughs> Tough. Too late. Is this why, for example, we find Muslims are so anti-black even today? Who are right? anti-black? Muslims, did you say anti-black? Yes. Quote, on the day when some face will be white and some face will be black. Yeah, but do you know what that's referencing to? Let me second. read. That's Don't referencing be chicken. to. One As for those whose faces have been black. It will be said the wrong context. to them. You're taking this in this the wrong you after your professional belief then taste the punishment for that because you disbelieved. Al Imran chapter 3 verse 106 in the Quran. And on the day of resurrection, you Muhammad, do you see those who are lied concerning Allah with their faces they are black? Is it not the home of the scorners in hell? Quote unquote. Does the Bible ever say such language? No. The Bible says repent and believe the God of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible does say black means misery, etc. etc. How could that be when Jeremiah in the Old Testament had a black man from Ethiopia who rescued Jeremiah the Jewish prophet? His name was Ebed Melech. So Ebed Melech, Ethiopian from Africa, was the man that got selected to rescue Jeremiah, the prophet of God in Israel. 
And God said, Evan Melech, I've got a reward for you. You're righteous before me. Don't be afraid of the king. Okay? So Moses married an Ethiopian woman called Zipporah. Right? We find that in Ex Ex uh, Deuteronomy chapter 12. Now when Moses got married to this black lady from Ethiopia, Miriam, the sister of Moses, was very upset. She complained to God. And then God said, what? So God punished the sister of Moses seven days of leprosy. That shows how angry God was. And after seven days, Moses pleaded, Lord, please, she's repentant. And then God took away the leprosy. You see, the Bible is very colorblind. People make uh, politics as of race because they want to be superior to the other. The Bible says Jesus Christ, our Lord, does not look like a blonde, white, blue-eyed man. Or for that matter, a black man from Ghana. Or a Japanese man from the Southeast Asia. Or a Cherokee Native American from North America. Why? Because Jesus said, I came from above. You're from below. So Jesus transcends all human colors. What race was, what? What race was your God? Race. Yeah. There's no such thing as race in the Bible. Wasn't your God Jewish? You're being racist. No, no. Wasn't your yes, God Jewish? God isn't, says, that, isn't that God divides humanity <laughs> into languages? <laughs> Wasn't your God Jewish? German, Japanese, Hebrew, whatever. Right. And then those are families, clans. That's why you never, ever, ever find the word race in the Bible. So when you say what race was it, that's a stupid, redundant question. What about when Jesus calls okay. the woman a dog? Right. What about in the Bible when Jesus calls that woman a dog? Uh, <laughs> Excuse me, hello. They should read what he actually said. Right? That's racism in the Bible. Really? Yeah. Right. Read the verse. Right, that's bread. Read the verse. Okay. When Jesus talked to the Phoenician woman, yeah. right, and it was on the table, there was food, right? What happens if this was a dog, your pet, underneath? The crumbs would fall down and the pet would eat them. That's what happened. Jesus never said, you're a dog. Okay? Let me pull out the verse here. I know, you don't know what he's saying. Jesus said, actually, the pet dogs eat the crumbs off the table. Actually, it was a woman who said that, not Jesus. So she was right. You have a pet, the dog licks the little things underneath that you've left as little crumbs. Excellent. So Jesus says, look, the table is for the Jewish people. Okay? I am the bread that came down from heaven. So to the Jew first, they have the opportunity to hear the word of God I'm teaching them from by myself. If they don't accept this, then those crumbs, they're going to be eaten by what? The Gentiles. Because they're hungry. And they'll be fed. While the Jewish people were supposed to eat the whole bread, won't get a single piece. And that's the context of the whole conversation. And so why did Jesus tell the woman, your faith has saved you? Right? Jesus talks to a Roman centurion. A centurion soldier in the Roman Empire was a soldier that was in charge of 100 soldiers. Okay? The centurion came and he wanted his servant to be healed. And Jesus... And the centurion says, Lord, don't come to my house. Just say the word and my servant will be healed. And Jesus says, this is amazing. I have never, ever seen such faith in Israel like this man. Can I ask you a question? So that you can have to finish. So the Lord Jesus elevated the hated Roman because he had faith. And Jesus says, he's got better faith than you Jewish friends. And that servant was healed. So Jesus does not operate under racism. But let's go on about these guys. You know, in England today, there's a movement to remove statues of so-called slave traders in the past because they were white. Okay. What about the statues, perhaps, of black kings in Africa who actually encouraged the slave trade? Anybody going to do anything about that? Uh, and by the way, in Sudan, 
There's a street by that by this guy. This guy, a Muslim trade of slave trade. Right? There's a street named after him in Sudan even today. Why don't they remove that street name? <laughs> He's laughing, but people died. Ah, yeah. His name was uh, Al Zubair Pasha Rama, the most powerful slave trader in Sudan. There's, his name is actually the name of a street in Sudan in Khartoum. So if you're going to talk about horrible white people involved in slavery, what about the Arab slave traders equally as well? Furthermore, when is the time right, for questions? After finished, I know you. <laughs> right, ever heard of Iran? Iran, over there, another island next door to us, right? Why is it that Arab Muslim slave traders invaded Iran in 1631? Invaded who? Doesn't you know. The Muslims helped Ireland during the famine. Oh, the yeah. Ottomans sent ships to help the to, yeah, to help yeah. the Irish. In so we talking about in, that. in June 1631, yeah. Arabs yeah. from Morocco yeah. area yeah. went by their boats yeah. and they landed in Baltimore, in Baltimore, in Ireland. And they took the entire village, apart from the men and children who were killed, back to North Africa as slaves. The Irish still remember this. They still do. How was the Irish right. famine caused? The Irish famine, how was it caused? Right. Ever heard of, uh, who, who right. Who ever heard of a country Muslims? called Iceland? Not the shop called Iceland, Why is it called Iceland? but Iceland. Why did Muslims ever went to Iceland? Oh, because you don't study, that's your problem. Wait. Iceland, it's okay. okay. The Muslims went to Iceland. Yes, <laughs> they went to Reykjavik Island and they took over 40 Icelandic <laughs> people as slaves. Right there, after they've been to Ireland, they also went to Iceland. Okay, when you talk to the Icelandic people, they call this the Turkish problems. Ottoman, Ottoman, not Turkish. Ottoman. Uh -huh. Ottoman, not Turkish. The same bunch. Okay? They remember the history. Their fathers were taken as slaves to northern parts of Africa, controlled by Turkey. That is true. That is why they call the Turkoman problems. Okay? England, Cornwall, Devon. Ever been to Cornwall, Devon? Beautiful, yeah. Yeah. Slave traders also from the Arabs came there as well to England. That, that is why there was a parliamentary law established in the 17th century that said we want all people in England to donate money, put in the donation box in churches so we can send the money to rescue our, fr our families captured by the Arab Muslims in Africa. Yeah, you don't know this history no, bit. Don't know. Okay, let's don't switch know. to East Africa. You're talking about your own history, man. Right, East Africa. Right. East Africa had slaves from Africa stationed in Zanzibar Island, Kilwa, and Bemba. And where did they go to? They went to Arabia called the Hijaz. Some of them went to India. And some of them went to Pakistan. That's right. If you go to Pakistan today, you will find the sons and daughters of these black African people still living there right now. They call them the Shidis. But they're at the bottom of Pakistani society because of classic racism against non whitish looking people. And that's Pakistan. Now let's go to Iran and Iraq. He's talking about slavery. Right. When Iran slavery is part and of Christianity's main what happened? since the beginning. There you go. Talk about right. There were black people that rose up in revolt against the Arab Muslim slave traders and oppressors. Three times they rose up to fight. The Arabs called it the Zanj Rebellion. Zanj meaning people from East Africa. So the black people were not disobedient. They said, we want to do something about this. So they rose up in Iran. The Irish, okay. the Irish loved the Ottomans. Oh, yeah. The Irish loved the Ottomans because yeah. the Ottomans These are the historical events. During the famine. 
These are the Ottoman sent land. ships to the Ottomans. Okay. So you're talking well, rubbish. Who started to abolish slavery in the world in the modern era? The British. It wasn't the Christians. It was, oh, yes, it was. It wasn't the Christians. William Wilberforce. <laughs> The Clapton sent the from Christians. North London. You see, you're simply ignorant. In 1803, uh, Britain passed the law abolishing slavery. In 1833, it came into action. Let me ask you this. Have there, has there ever been a movement within Islam to say, let's get rid of slavery? Good. So why is it the hated white people in Britain are the ones who started to put slavery in the British Empire? And the British people sent British Navy ships to get rid of slavery in West Africa and East Africa. Have the Arab the ships, Muslims the ever ships, sent ships, the ships were to, to take destroy people slavery to America, anywhere? To the cotton fields. Man. Have the Arab about? Muslim ever done the same thing? You're talking rubbish. No. You're talking rubbish. And that time, the Muslim, okay. we, didn't, we didn't have steamships that time anyway. Doesn't matter, you had doubts. You had doubts. We didn't have steamships. You had doubts. You foolish boy. You took, you took all the slaves right. to America. Where did, where did America, so, where did the slaves they, of America come from? Uh, they came from. Where did they come from? Yeah. Okay. Do you know where the slaves came from, from West Africa? Right. The kings, the African kings, that's right. Hypocrite, you're a hypocrite. African kings, you stupid boy. You're a hypocrite. Sold black people to the white people in the ships. But let me ask you this. Where did these slaves, where did the slaves from West Africa end up? Some came from Britain. The vast majority did not go to North America. They went to places like Brazil. One second. Okay. Let me, let me ask you a question. Ninety percent the, the people that of he's talking, all the, the African slaves. People that he's talking about. Ninety percent of all the slaves from the, Western for example, Africa. They were, they, they ended were given up names, weren't they? The in South America. The they were given okay. names by the slave traders, weren't they? What about yes, Muhammad? Muhammad? Historically, yes. Uh, historic. What, what kind of names were they given? Now, ladies and gentlemen. Can you name me any African? So called people that were given right. Islamic names. That's a photograph no, of a names. British Why? Navy they were ship. Enslaved by Christians. Ex slaves on board. Okay. These are real what pictures. Kind of names were they real given? people. Were they given Islamic names? You see? The, the slaves that were taken, were they given Islamic names or Christian <laughs> names? <laughs> that, come on, be real people. That is Zanzibar. In the 19th century. Okay? Easy to expose this guy because everything uh, he says is bullshit. Right. The American Marines, they have a hissar from the halls of Montezuma, where from Tripoli. Now, why do the American Marines sing that song? Because in 1801, right, when America had become a nation state over 30 odd years, American white people have been taken as slaves in the Mediterranean. So the American government was fed up of paying 25% of the American federal budget in getting ransom money for white slaves in the Mediterranean. Okay? So finally, the American president said, get the Marines, go and destroy those slaveholders in North Africa. And that's why the American Marines went to where? To Algeria, Morocco. Brother, and smashed it. This is irrelevant. And that is why 